Welcome to another 10 at 10. We're so honored that you've joined us today and we're just gonna have a great time just learning more about the subject of unity and how we can interact and communicate well with one another. And so let's just begin this time in prayer. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just honor you. We just thank you, Father, that we can come together, that we can grow in our faith, that we can grow in character, Father, um, so that, Lord, you're glorified by the way that we interact and treat one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're coming uh, this uh, for these few lessons out of Genesis chapter 11, where a group of people gathered, and it was uh, in the Bible, it's called the Tower of Babel. Basically, these people had gathered. They said, let's build a city together, and let's build a tower in it that's so high, it literally reaches to the heavens so that everybody around, they can see what we've done, and our names can become famous. They can see what we're all about. And God knew that that wasn't a good thing. And so in verse 7 of Genesis 11, it says, Come, God is speaking. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. And so we're talking about the importance of communication and that communication, it actually breeds unity because you, communication brings clarity. Communication brings understanding. It helps us understand the thought processes that we may have. And it also helps us align our own thought processes with God's word. Uh, maybe things we're not thinking correctly about. And so bottom line, communication brings brings clarity. And we spoke about yesterday out of Ephesians chapter 5, just the importance of filling up with God, filling up with his word, filling up with his presence. And then the word literally says, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. In other words, it's another word for preach, but preach in a good connotation. Preach where people are encouraged. Preach where people know of the goodness, the faithfulness, the might of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. And so he said, we're to be preaching to one another about who God is in a good way. And then we, we talked about the importance of letting thanksgiving come out of our mouths. And God says, and give thanks for every, um, in, um, give thanks in everything. Give thanks for everything that you have. You know, sometimes we think that it's because of our, our own efforts that we have everything that we have. No, don't be deceived. Give thanks that God's blessed you. Give thanks that God has provided for you. And particularly back in um, this last year and all the things that we have um, that have happened in 2020, you give thanks for what God's done. Give thanks for his sustaining power, for his providing power. Give thanks for how he helped you. And so it's important for us to look at things through the lens of what God is doing, what he has done, and um, just, just his goodness. And then we said, submit to one another. And that literally means subject yourself or come underneath one another, yield to one another's preferences. And another way to put it is just outgive one another, outlove one another, be, um, be more merciful to work to be more merciful than the other person is doing. And we know that there's a lot of sowing and reaping. So when you do that, when you sow those things, you're going to reap them in your own life. And you may not reap them from that person, but you're going to reap them nonetheless. And so we talked about just the importance of communicating clearly and let our, letting our communication be a godly communication. The next thing that we want to look at is found in Ephesians chapter 4, and this is verses 1 through 3. And we're just going to just touch on this lightly. Paul is speaking again, and he says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God. So there's four things that he tells us to do to live worthy of our calling. Always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And then verse three says, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit. And so we just want to look at just those four attributes that Paul is encouraging us to do. And he says, this is how you can walk worthy of your calling. This is how um, 
you can promote unity. This is, this is the goods on the inside that will help you interact with each other in a way that it pleases God. And he, first of all, he says, be humble. And so um, I'm, I'm gonna come at it more from a point of think of the opposite. Like if somebody's really humble, they're not someone that is brash. They're not somebody that's harsh. Um, they're not somebody that's rude with their speech, rude with their actions, but they're just the opposite of that. And it gives us the idea of one having one's emotions under control, having your mo emotions in check. And again, I'm going to go back to yesterday. The way you do that is getting filled up on him and then reminding yourselves of these things. But be humble. Have your emotions under control. The next thing is be gentle. And gentle, another word for gentle is meek. And meek simply can mean teachable. It can mean that you're open, um, that maybe you, you're not seeing the whole picture. You're open knowing you have not arrived. And it doesn't matter how old we how old we are. It doesn't matter who we're interacting with. We always can learn from other people. We can learn from people that are younger than us. We can learn from um, just anyone. And so it's having that openness so we said communication creates clarity, openness creates safety. So I'm going to say that again, openness creates safety. And so when we're, when we're teachable, when we're open, we're creating a safe environment, which promotes unity. The next thing that we're, the, the next thing that Paul said was be patient. Patient is a spirit of endurance never quitting, especially in times of adversity. In other words, look at things that you're in it for the long haul. Um, look at, unless God leads you differently, look at relationships that you're investing for the long haul. And so you have a spirit of endurance. You don't quit, especially when it gets rough. So you're patient. Um, you don't have to have things fixed today because tomorrow will come and you can work on it some more. So I don't know, that's for someone. You don't have to have everything fixed today because you're thinking for long-term and God's gonna help you walk this out step-by-step step in this relationship. And then the last thing is bear with one another in love. And in the scripture, it actually says, it says, um, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And so you just think about bearing. Bearing again is dwelling together with others in knowledge, knowing their high points and knowing their low points. And you're, again, you're sticking with them. And just like we talked about yesterday, you're willing to sub subject yourself, sometimes just in love, to come underneath, to prefer someone else and what, what happens is they see God's love and unity starts happening. A coming together starts happening. A meshing by God's love. And that's a supernatural love. It's a love that wants the very best for one another. It's a love that says, I want to do life with you. It's a love that says, um, I'm in this for the long haul. And so I just encourage you today again, um, let's walk in unity but let's do it in knowledge. Let's be humble. Let's be gentle. Let's be patient. And let's give allowance for each other's faults. We love you guys. You have a fantastic day.